Good morning, all the students. Please mark your attendance in the chat box. Today there will be a small quiz after the class. So when I ask the questions, who will answer first? They'll be given the interaction marks, right? So focus throughout the class and try to answer the questions. Can you see this presentation? Okay. Yeah. Now let's move on to our third lecture under module one. In the previous lecture, we have seen one second. Yeah. In the previous lecture, we have seen how to understand a well posed learning problem and how to design a learning system by choosing the training experience and choosing the target function also. So when you're trying to choose the training experience, we need to categorize what type of training experience you're providing a machine. Means you're providing it a direct feedback or an indirect feedback. Means if you are trying to teach the machine uh, as and when it takes the step, you give a feedback to it. Uh, indicating that it is a, uh, a good step or a bad step, right? You're giving it a direct feedback. That is called as direct training experience. But you give the machine some pre-fed sequence of tasks to be executed and ask it to learn from that uh, pre-fed tasks. Then it is called as indirect training experience. Okay, and also the level of control uh, the machine has in learning whether it is being assisted by a human expert or by a teacher at every move or whether it has complete control on taking decisions on which move to make next in case of playing a game, right? So if it is able to take decisions uh, by playing against itself, then it has complete control on what way it is learning. Okay, all these uh, concepts we have seen under training experience. Again, when the machine is learning from an indirect feedback, then uh, a problem called as credit assignment will arise. Credit assignment means, uh, again, if we take the example of playing checkers or playing chess, uh, if one pawn is being moved in a particular direction and the, uh, it goes on with some sequence of moves and finally wins or loses a game. In that case, uh, what credit do you give or uh, um, uh, whether you appreciate a particular move or blame a particular move based on the outcome? Uh, the, for this, I have given you an example. In the beginning, the moves are optimal, means correct. But later, they are followed by wrong moves or later the opponent has played better than what is expected. In that case, the initial moves, though they are good, eventually the game may be lost. In that case, do you blame the initial moves? Do you give a negative mark to the initial moves? That is what uh, is a confusing task when you are giving credit to that particular move. This is called as difficulty in credit assignment. Right, though the initial moves are correct because of some bad uh, see, moves later, the game may be lost. And uh, though the game is started with some bad moves and later they are followed by some good moves, the game may be won. Uh, so only by taking into consideration uh, the type of move and the outcome it encountered, we can't simply assign some credit or blame to a particular move in playing a game, right? So uh, how do you formulate this? All these are problems you encounter when you are uh, transforming a real-time problem into a machine learning problem. So how do you come across all that? Okay, all these you'll be learning throughout this uh, course. In the next uh, part, we have seen how to choose the target function, how to mathematically represent this target function. What has to be achieved in this machine learning task of playing chess is for every board state, the next optimal move have to be decided. 
right if a pawn is in a particular legal board state now in what direction it may move it can move in some five six directions but what should be the optimal move uh, that we try to model as a mathematical expression or a target function for that we have taken v as from uh, the, the uh, target function v as from any legal board state to a real valued set real valued set means this set will contain a set of moves it can move in left direction the value given is 2 it can move in forward direction the value is given as 1 if it uh, it can move in uh, right hand side direction the value is given as 3 from this the machine can select that this is the optimal move why because it is given a larger weight means moving though there are some uh, legal moves that are allowed for this particular board state see this is the board for this particular board state it can move in three directions right all these three directions are given some numbering some scale now it can move in all these three directions having these weights 2 1 and 3 because 3 is having more weight that is moving in right hand side direction we can assess that this is the optimal move from this particular board state means if the pawn is moved in this right hand side direction then it may progress towards winning a game remember it may again it is not that correct exactly i can say it will win the game it is an approximation i am saying that it may win the game because this is the most optimal move from this particular board state right this is what i am trying to approximate at this position remember machine learning always approximates it can't predict with 100% accuracy something it is stochastic stochastic means it can't be determined with complete confidence it can't be predicted with complete confidence it is called as random guess okay with what accuracy that guess is may being made is the accuracy of that machine learning problem right so here i am telling if it moves in right hand side direction based on the moves given then that may be an optimal move which can progress towards winning the game but in the middle lot of things may happen i may take later a bad decision uh, or in this case the system may take a uh, bad decision later or the opponent is playing equally optimally in that case i may not win the game though i take an optimal move right so i am just approximating i am just approximating guessing that this is an optimal move towards winning the game right this is what i am trying to tell you so we are trying to choose a target function we are trying to represent it mathematically uh, see when i ask you to add two numbers and develop a program to add two numbers what do you do do you keep adding 2 plus 3 4 plus 5 6 plus 7 10 plus 12 do you keep it repeating again and again no you put it into a mathematical expression format so that it works for any integer or it works uh, for any type of number right so instead of writing 2 plus 3 i am just giving as a plus b means i am putting it into a target function i am putting it into a mathematical format i am putting it into a more generalizable way so that this a and b can take any number and add them instead of showing each time i can add these two numbers 2 plus 3 3 plus 4 like that did you understand this is very important i am trying to generalize my problem of adding two numbers by taking a mathematical expression as c equal to a plus b this is my target function right this is how i am doing my operation of adding two numbers in a mathematical format now this works for any type of number it works for 2 plus 3 it works for 5 plus 6 i need not show that it can work for any type of numbers if i give a general equation for that this is called as mathematical formulation of a real world problem this is called as choosing the target function 
right this is what we have done in the previous classes now in to, uh, today's class we are choosing a representation for the target function we have chosen the target function in the previous class now let us choose the representation for the target function so that the system will understand what exactly it has to do if you give the instruction that you play in this particular manner you will win the game how many such plays can a machine remember we have to generalize that if we ask it to add two numbers can you tell it to add such uh, uh, can you uh, tell it to perform such additions some thousand times or million times do you keep doing that no you give it a simple expression c equal to a plus b in the same way you are choosing a representation for the target function here you are learning that in today's class and choosing a function approximation algorithm also which will help us to estimate the training values and adjust the weights right now we'll go very slowly with this top with these two topics today and in the next class we'll see how to arrive at a final design of designing the learning system right now let us choose a representation for the target function now in the previous class we have specified ideal target function v what is that v maps to v maps from any legal board state b where your pawns are residing where your pawns are standing on your game on a chess game from a legal board state b to any legal move it can be left right or it can be l shape or it can be diagonal movement whatever it is all the legal moves are being recorded and each move is given a value so that the highest value will tell the machine that that is the optimal move for that particular board state which is proven to uh, uh, proceed towards success or winning the game by learning from the previous games right so this is our ideal target function does anybody have doubt in this particular target function don't let me proceed if you have a doubt here students i can hear someone snoring from the other side wake up students tell me did you understand this target function from any legal board state which makes a legal move okay that is your ideal target function what you are doing is a vast real time problem you are bringing it into a precise brief modeling of maths by maths by using maths right so you are trying to mathematically model your problem so that the machine will understand that as i said if you ask the machine each time like in calculator what you do you keep adding numbers right you uh, if you want to add two numbers you keep typing the numbers adding them typing the numbers and adding them that is what we do in a calculator we are not generalizing it each time we are specifically specifying the numbers and adding them but in computer what we do we write a program and we give an equation for it to add two numbers means you are mathematically formulating the problem so that you need not each time keep typing the numbers to get added you can just pass them as parameters and immediately that addition will be given to you you are generalizing the task you are making it understandable by the machine in order to add two numbers this is the simplest scenario i can tell you how to generalize or mathematically model a problem right so what is our next step our next step is to choose the uh, choose a representation that the learning program will use to describe the function v hat observe this this is not simply v it is v hat that it will learn i am uh, reading this line again choose a representation that the learning program will use to describe the function v hat that it will learn v hat is represented like this why i am not using v 
why i am using we had we had will tell that it is an approximation we had will tell that it is a guess we had will tell that it is a prediction just estimation of something it is not the real truth right it is predicting something it is estimating about something means in this case it is estimating that the next move would be in the right hand side direction optimal move is in the right hand side direction it is estimating it is not clearly saying that if you take right hand side move from the current board state you will exactly win the game it is not telling that you may win the game if you take an optimal move in the right hand side direction when may comes into picture i am estimating it i am guessing it i am approximating it that is why this is called as approximation of v or estimation of v or simply we can call it as v hat understood yes let us proceed forward now now lots of options are available for us to represent the target function it is not that you have to represent only in this particular way you have lots of uh, options uh, what are the options available using a large table with a distinct entry specifying the value for each distinct board state right you can take a big table where you can have for this board state b1 these are the moves for this board state b2 these are the moves for this board state b3 these can be the moves you are trying to record all the legal moves for a particular board state in the form of a table and give it to the machine to learn from that table that is one option available what is the other option using a collection of rules that match against features of the board state okay the pawn is in this particular board state there are these many uh, black opponents on the other side or on the board and one opponent is nearby to this now if it moves in this direction what weight can be given to that move means if this combination of pawns are there on the board this would be the legal move this would be the optimal move you are giving that in the form of rules if this is the case then this is the move if this is the case then this is the next move you are trying to represent it in the form of rules right that is one option available or you can make it more complex in order to uh, meet some other conditions like a quadratic polynomial function of predefined board states or using neural networks you can uh, start um, indicating what are all the training examples that may be available to a machine okay let us not go to this complex part let us just understand the first two things you may represent it as a table or you may represent it as a collection of rules okay but we have to maintain a trade off here what is the trade off between what parameters you need to maintain this trade off to pick a more expressive representation close to an approximation of ideal target function v it requires more training data means if you want to make the prediction as correct as possible for that you uh, need to have more training data right i'll make this statement very simple you are teaching a child to learn how to play chess now you teach him for one day he plays nominally if you teach him for 3 days he plays moderately but if you teach him for 2 to 3 years with expertise uh, experience provided he plays like a professional right means he is getting more and more training experience and he is uh, in that case he is playing more and more accurately means he is winning more and more games that is what i am trying to explain in the last point to pick a more expressive representation to pick a model uh, to make a model predict more accurately you have to provide it more and more training data you understood clearly now i am reading this to pick a more expressive representation 
or a mathematical expression close to an approximation of ideal target function v when we say that a target function is ideal when it is predicting with lot of accuracy with high accuracy right now to pick a more expressive representation close to an approximation of ideal target function v what it requires in order to gain that expertise in order to gain that knowledge of predicting accurately what it requires it requires more and more training data you have to provide it lot of experience with training data so that it can predict more and more accurately got it now let us choose a simple representation for this can you say you learn more and more so that you will predict accurately can you say to the machine like that no you have to represent everything mathematically okay as i said in addition of two numbers you are giving it an equation in order to make it understand that whatever values are passed to a and b they have to be added and stored in c that is a mathematical uh, model you have given for that program now for this game program for this game of uh, learning chess or uh, sorry for this game of playing chess let us choose a simple representation for any given board state the function v hat what is this v hat it is an approximation the function v hat will be calculated as a linear combination of the following board features what board features do you take into consideration now on this particular board for this board there are lot of pawns now let me explain you with respect to single pawn so that you will understand it better now when you are taking a single pawn now for this given board state the function v hat will be calculated as a linear combination of the following board states x1 what is x1 the number of black pieces on the board what is x2 the number of red pieces on the board or white pieces in uh, case of chess okay the number of white pieces on the board x3 the number of black kings on the board x4 number of red kings on the board x5 the number of black pieces threatened by white pieces means if a black piece moves in this direction it may be threatened by the white piece means it may be acquired by that uh, opponent it may be removed from the board you will lose that pawn okay that is x5 the number of black pieces threatened by the white pieces and what is x6 the number of red uh, white pieces threatened by black pieces okay now these are all the board features we are taking into consideration in order to guess what would be the next move for this particular board state did you understand clearly now now our learning program will represent this v hat of b b is a legal board state when b is used it is a legal board state remember now for this legal board state what should be the approximation of move for the next uh, step as a it is it can be represented as a linear function of the form c v hat of b is equal to how you are representing that next move it is a linear combination means whenever you take decision of a next move all these features should be kept in mind that is what a human expert will do right it checks how many number of black pieces are there on the board how many number of white pieces how many number of kings how many number of queens how many uh, number of uh, black or white pieces threatened by the opponent means he may lose in the next move okay all these will be coordinated in his mind in order to take a decision about the next move now we are trying to give all the details to the machine also in order to approximate the next move that is v hat of b am i clear now now this v hat of b is being represented as w not that is a constant i'll tell you what is this constant now w1 x1 
W2 X2, W3 X3, W4 X4, W5 X5 and W6 X6. We have taken six board features and each feature X1, X2 and so on is given a particular weight. What is that weight? This weight is learnt from the previous sequence of moves by playing against itself. If this part at this particular feature, if this particular board state has to be considered, how much weight has to be given for that particular board state? I'm considering the number of black moves on the board X1. Now that need not be given a larger weight. My main concern is what pieces are threatened by the opponent X5 and X6. So that may be given a larger weight. How that quotient is determined is by learning from the historical data, by learning from its previous moves played against itself. Right? Now, what is this W0? What is this weight? It is a constant. It uh, attributes or it counts for the error associated in the approximation. Right? I'm uh, giving an equation and based on this equation the next move can be uh, estimated but because of taking that move am I progressing towards winning the game my motive is to win the game the machines motive is to win the game now am I progressing to win the game towards winning the game if at all there is any uh, deviation in the estimation. If there is any error in the estimation, I can't make approximate. Uh, so I can't make exact estimate, uh, exact uh, decision. Right? This is just an estimation. And whenever you make an estimation, always there will be a small error associated with it. Now, this W naught is that error. Did you understand clearly? Now, students, I want you to ask some doubt if you didn't understand. Later steps are based on this equation. Students, can I expect some doubts from your side? Otherwise, I'll assume that I'm very clear to you. Right. So this is the uh, estimation of a move which I can make from board state B. V hat of B is an estimation I can uh, is an estimation of a legal move I can make from the legal board state B. Right? So that I am representing it in the form of an equation. Now for every board state all the quotients and the values will be substituted and a real number is obtained. A number is assigned for that particular move from that board state. Say this can move in this direction. For that, all these parameters are substituted. X1, X2, X3, X4. Values are substituted. And V, of, uh, v hat of B in this direction is calculated. That will give you some 12. V hat of B from in this direction will be calculated. That is given as 2. V hat of B from this uh, board state is calculated. That is taken as some 20. So in which direction can I move? What is the optimal move I can make from this particular board state is in the right hand side direction. Okay. This is how you need to understand how you can represent a problem in mathematical terms. Now we have arrived at a partial design of a checkers learning prog program. So what is the um, uh, uh, design we have arrived at? Let us see. Uh, we have defined the task that is playing checkers. How do you assess its performance by percentage of games won in the world tournament? Means you are preparing this machine learning program in order to play chess with either another machine or another human expert and we are assessing its performance by counting the percent by uh, calculating the percent of games won in the world tournament okay now in order to play what type of experience you are providing it 
it is gaining experience by playing against itself right it is optimizing its moves each time okay it has played in this way it has lost so it will try to optimize its moves in the next game now it has played in this way it has won so because of taking these steps it has won so it will try to optimize it its a uh, sequence of moves by adjusting the weights so that it can play better in the next game okay this is how it is trying to learn from it, its experience by playing against itself now what is the target function the first three are to define a learning problem and the second and, uh, and the fourth and fifth one are the design choices you have made you can make these design choices in a different way also you can uh, try to represent this entire task of playing in a different way but let us take the more simplest way so that the students can understand how exactly it can be done okay so the target function we have chosen that is any move from a legal board state to a set of real numbers means it has some weights given to different moves from that we can select the optimal move and we have also given a representation to the target function now for this particular target function v we have given a representation as v hat of b v hat of b means the estimation of v again i am asserting again and again i am asserting on this point i am doing an estimation i am doing an approximation i am not compulsorily telling that if you take this move you will win the game i am just approximating that this would be the optimal move for this you have taken v hat of b and for that you have given an expression like this by taking into consideration various other board states and associating some error also because you are estimating you are giving a weight to that you are giving a value to that move from this board state b you are giving a value to that next move from this board state b right now your next step is to choose a function approximation algorithm now how do you choose this function approximation algorithm uh, what is your criteria to choose this function approximation algorithm in order to learn the target function v hat now i am no longer using v did you notice i am using v hat v is my ideal target function v hat is my estimation i am repeating v is my ideal target function which i want to be met but in real time i can't meet it because no machine can uh, make predictions with 100% accuracy right so i'm just making an estimation of v and that is v hat now in order to learn the target function v hat we require a set of training examples right in order to make predictions you need some training examples each describing a specific board state p and the training value v train for that b you understood this line in order to choose a function approximation algorithm how to proceed is first you have to learn the target function v hat for that we require lot of training examples so that that will describe a specific board state b and the training value v train of b for that board state means in order to take a decision from that board state to move in which direction you need lot of training examples correct if you leave a child uh, who doesn't know to play chess with all the pawns arranged for him how will he decide which way to move you need to provide the training experience right in the same way you are providing the training experience to the machine also that is we train of b what type of training you provide now let us take this example you are providing uh, you are taking this for this particular board state combination of features as x1 equal to 
means number of uh, black coins x2 equal to 0 number of red coins is 0 x3 1 x4 0 x5 0 and x6 0 and for that move you are calculating the weight to be 100 uh, sorry you are calculating the outcome uh, for that particular move to be 100 plus 100 positive means it has become an optimal move because it may result in winning a game. If it results in winning a game, you're giving it a positive value. If it results in losing a game, you'll give it a negative value minus 100, right? Now, what can you tell from this particular move? You see that all the white coins, number of white coins on the board is zero. Number of white coins on the board is zero means black has one, correct? Black has one. Because black has one, because of this, taking this board state into consideration and black has won for that legal move, you are assigning the value 100 plus 100. Remember, it is not minus 100. If it lost the game, then it would have been minus 100. But because number of white coins on the white pawns on the board is zero and number of black pawns on the board is three, it, it can indicate that black has one and because black pawns have one you're giving it plus hundred as the um, uh, value that is credit for that particular board states move okay now let us describe a processor that first derives such training examples from the indirect training experience available to the learner then adjust the weights wi to best fit these training examples now what you understood from this now let us describe a processor first that derives the training examples from the indirect training experience. Let us give the machine, if these are the sequence of moves, the game may be won. Or if these are the sequence of moves, the game may be lost. Let it learn by itself from the indirect training experience. Okay. Now, by learning from all that previous moves, by learning from all the historical data, it will assign some weights right from W0 to W6. Uh, so, yeah, W6. Okay, that is what we have seen, right? W0 to W6. It will, the machine will learn from its previous data and it will assign some weights for this particular board state. High importance have to be given. Weight should be more. For this particular board state, it need not consider that board state at all for that particular move. So that can be treated as zero. Like that, by learning from its previous experience, it will assign weights to this uh, W. These are the quotients. Okay. So weights will be assigned for that. Now, are these the final weights? No. The system will, the machine will learn iteratively. Means next time it learns, for this game, it, it may think that this particular move is correct. But in the next case, while playing the next game, this may understand that this move made in the previous game is not so optimal. Though it is correct legal move, it is not optimal move. So let that weight be adjusted. Let it be given a lesser weight and optimal move given be more weight. Let the optimal weight be given more weight. Did you understand? I'm repeating once again. When a game is being played, weights will be assigned for these quotients. Now, those may not be the optimal weights. In the next game, the machine may discover that this is a legal move, but not an optimal move. In that case, that weight will be adjusted in the next game. And in the next game, further it understands that this move is correct, but still may not be the optimal move. So I have to adjust the weight. And this adjustment of weights will go on until it converges. Understand this word, converges. Converges means no longer the weights can be adjusted. Means... It has arrived at the most optimal sequence of moves to win a game. Did you understand? 
the weight assignment will converge the process of weight assignment will converge converge means it will come to a state that no longer any assignments or any adjustments need to be done though you adjust still the outcome will be the same though you adjust till still the assignment will be uh, sorry outcome will be the same so there is no meaning in adjusting there is no use in adjusting the weights in that case it has to stop there because it has arrived at the optimal assignment of weights but that is the real life scenario the system converges but it can't again predict with 100% accuracy the next move why because it depends on the opponent's move also and opponent also will be playing in an optimal way that is why the weights have to be adjusted up to a particular range and it can be stopped so that it gives maximum accuracy not 100% accuracy now estimating the training values how to estimate the training values according to our formulation of the learning problem the only training information available to our learner is whether the game was eventually won or lost uh, uh, won or lost means to the learner what is the outcome that is available what is the information about the outcome that is available whether it is won or lost by taking this sequence of steps it is won or by taking this sequence of steps the game is lost only that information is available to the learner now on the other hand we require training examples that assign specific scores to specific board states right so you need lot of training to be provided to the machine in order to assign scores to specific board states and scores to legal moves from that board state when you are reviewing this video again you understand it in the scenario of playing a chess game okay so all the pawns when you arrange them they are in their legal board states and when they move forward they'll be moved to a legal board state again you have to understand that now we require training examples that assign specific scores to specific board states right now it is easy to assign a value to board states that correspond to the end of the game okay last position of the pawn and after move after its next move it will win the game means from a particular board state say your pawn is here now it is moving in this direction it is winning the game when it is winning the game you can easily assign weight to that particular board state you can easily assign score to that particular board state as plus 100 or plus 200 it depends on the um, uh, um, algorithm which you write okay so when this board state goes to the next board state and that is resulting in winning the game you can easily assign a value to that easy to assign a value to board states that correspond to the end of the game last board state you can easily assign the value but what about the intermediate board states it is very difficult to assign training values to the numerous intermediate board states intermediate board states uh, board states can have lots of sequences you can move in this direction in this direction and go to winning the game you can move in this direction in this direction and go to losing the game you can move in this direction and in this direction uh, almost losing the game but it can win the game lots of sequences are available for the intermediate board states so you have to formulate this properly in order to make the machine understand how to assign the values for the board states okay now instead of this confusion what we can do is one simple approach is to assign the training value of v train of b for any intermediate board state b to b v hat successor of b do not worry i'll explain this clearly now whenever you are assigning a training value of v train of b for any intermediate board state how you do that for that particular board state it can be represented as v hat of successor of b means estimation of the move to go to the successor board state 
Understood? I'm repeating this once again. If you want to assign a value to a move from a legal board state, then the move leads to next board state, right? Your current board state is B. Your next board state is successor of B. Now, you're moving from board state B to successor of B with some estimation V hat. That is why you're giving it as V hat successor of B. Means you can just assign a value to an intermediate board state by keeping its next move in consideration. That is why it is little confusing because you may not know it. There may be lots of choices in moving from intermediate board state to a next board state. Last stage, you're winning a game or losing a game. You can give the value easily, plus or minus, negative credit or a positive credit. But when you're in the intermediate stage, your current board state can be understood only in terms of its next, next board state. Right? So we are representing it as V hat successor of B. Now, let us understand it more better. One sim uh, that is what I have given here. Uh, in this case, V hat is the learner's approximation to V. As I said, it is just a guess of the next board state. It is not optimal. Okay. And the successor of B is the next board state following B. So if you take this is the board state where your pawn is lying. Now it moves on to this direction. This is called as the successor of B. This board state is called as successor of B. Now this estimation is called as V hat. In order to move from board state B to board state B dash, you're making an estimation that this is an optimal move. But you're not sure whether it is an optimal move. Correct? That is called as successor of B. Now, how you can model this? This rule for estimating training values can be summarized like this. V train of B. How you're training it? How you're training a current board state B? As estimation of its next board state. I'm able to put this in clear terms now. How you're training your current board state to move on to next stage? It is the estimation to move on to its next board state, that is successor of B. Or simply you can write it as B dash. Okay, now V hat tends to be more accurate for board state closer to game's end. That is what you understood, right? If it is at the end state, we can easily estimate this V hat that it is plus 100 or minus 100 because you know the outcome. But if it is intermediate board state, you don't know the outcome. You can't predict the outcome with 100% accuracy. So V hat tends to be more accurate for board states closer to the game's end. Now, under certain conditions, understand this very carefully, under certain conditions, the approach of iteratively estimating training values based on estimates of successor state values, that is this B dash, can be proven to converge towards perfect estimates of V train. Now, how do you optimize V train? How do you optimize your next step by adjusting the weights? How do you adjust the weights? How does the mission adjust the weights? It adjusts the weights by playing against itself, drawing experience from its previous games, adjusting the weights, again playing against itself, and drawing experience from that game, adjusting the weights until those weights no longer changes. They converge to a common value, which, which is near to the ideal function. Right? Okay. Now, how to adjust the weights? how the adjustment of weights is done. I'm talking about adjusting the weights again and again, but how to adjust the weights? We have to specify the learning algorithm for choosing the weights WI to best fit the set of training examples. What is the training example? The board state and the training provided for that board state to move on to the next board state. I'm repeating this again. In order to specify the learning algorithm for choosing the weights WI, how to specify those weights WI, how the algorithm will select those W, uh, select this, uh, that WI set of WI, 
is by best fitting the set of training examples b that is the current board state and we train b the values you are providing to that board state in order to select its next move okay this is what we want to adjust the weights have to be adjusted how to adjust the weights what is the motive behind adjusting these weights what is the objective behind adjusting these weights in order to minimize the error in the prediction see i can take this move that is actually the correct move in that correct scenario now i have taken this move what is the difference between the actual value to be taken and the estimation of the value uh, step that is taken the difference is called as prediction error say tomorrow's temperature is 34.5 which will occur can assume and a system has made a prediction that it is 34.2 so what is the error in the prediction tomorrow's uh, or uh, let us take it as today only today's actual temperature is 34.5 degrees celsius and uh, weather forecasting uh, model has estimated it as 34.2 so what is the prediction error here 0.3 did you understand what is prediction error or it may be 34.9 what is the actual temperature today is 34.5 degrees celsius and the weather forecast uh, the, the temperature forecasting model have predicted it to be 34.9 so what is the prediction error in this case plus 0.9 in the previous case minus 0.3 this is called as prediction error so your objective should be to reduce that prediction error and arrive at a ideal target function means reduce the prediction error and select the best optimal move for a current board state the one approach is to define the best hypothesis or set of weights in this case our hypothesis is deciding on best set of weights as that which minimizes the squared error e this is what i mentioned here this is actual one 34.5 is the actual temperature 34.9 is the predicted temperature so the difference is 0.4 this is the error in the estimation this is the error in the prediction now sometimes it may be negative if it predicted lower sometimes it may be positive it, if it predicted higher right so you are squaring some squaring it means squaring it whenever you square negative terms will become positive terms you know that right so it uh, you are squaring it and summing up all those errors now that sum squared error have to be less very less so that you uh, now the machine is set to perform with good accuracy okay so one approach is to define the set of weights as that which minimizes this squared error e between the training values and the values predicted by the hypothesis we had means you made some decision about we had you may, uh, sorry you made some estimate estimation with respect to we had now what is the difference between we and we had what is the difference between the ideal target function and the estimation you have made that is your prediction error that have to be minimized now how you can represent that e is approximately the error should be um, uh, equated to the difference between the actual value and the predicted value the actual value is drawn uh, from the training you provide and the predicted value this difference should be minimized which where this b and v train of b belongs to the training examples okay now this knowledge is drawn from the training examples and it is assessing some step uh, which is actually correct and it is also estimating this is the actual step that has to be taken and this is estimating a step 
now what is the difference between these two in arriving at a uh, outcome of winning the game what is the difference in the prediction that is the error that is the error in the prediction so you have to minimize this sum of squared errors that is e this has to be minimized minimizing the sum of squared errors is equivalent to finding the most probable hypothesis given the observed training data right so you are trying to find out more and more experience the machine is trying to draw more and more experience from the training data in order to reduce this prediction error that is it is trying to minimize the sum of squared errors okay that is how the adjustment of weights is done weights are adjusted prediction error is calculated weights are adjusted prediction error is calculated and this prediction error whenever it is minimized that is the correct selection of weights there it has to be stopped got it okay i think uh, uh, we'll go on with this topic in the next class and i'll just go little backwards and again start explanation so that it will be more clear to you if i hurry again you may not understand so let us keep this adjusting the weight still uh, to the next class and before ending this class let me ask you some questions okay uh, i said that uh, stochastic uh, i think this i haven't covered right okay let me leave this question let us go to the next question give example for direct and indirect training experience who will answer me this give example for direct and indirect training experience students you are there first question yeah one second first question topic i have been covered still so i'll skip that question yes tell me like i'll give the example of car ma'am okay direct uh, training experience is um, uh, the person sitting next to the driver mm. and dealing him okay and indirect is uh, reading the manual and uh, riding, riding the car very good very good who is this tanuj ma'am tanuj okay exactly can anybody else give another type of example direct and indirect training experience in real time not with respect to machine learning uh, ma'am like suppose teaching ma'am teaching okay uh, now you are giving us a direct uh, teaching process and mm. suppose you give us a uh, uh, gyroscope for uh, for study then okay. it is uh, indirect okay exactly good sadev right Uh, yes ma'am okay very good okay uh, then i think next question is also not covered so let us go to next one what is sse just now before ending the class i have uh, given this uh, explanation about sse what is this sse you are trying to reduce the prediction error by minimizing this e correct yes sum of squared errors very good who is that namesh swini yes yes swini it is sum squared errors so you are trying to minimize the error in the prediction that is you are trying to minimize sse that is you are trying to minimize sum squared errors you are trying to reduce the prediction accuracy okay that is called as minimizing the sum squared errors okay now explain task experience and performance with respect to developing a machine learning model for predicting whether a student gets into indian institute of technology or not you understood there are some parameters given for a student like uh, his um, academic score his score in the entrance and for that particular iit what is the cut off rank 
all this information is given and his basic uh, uh, qualification and his extracurricular uh, performance all these parameters are given N now you have to predict uh, or the machine has to predict whether a student will get into iit or not so what is t in this case what is e and what is p i think the question itself has all the answers but still i am asking you to categorize it clearly what is task you are going to perform here uh, ma'am can you repeat this question again you are developing a machine learning model in order to predict whether a student will get into iit or not based on his academic performance parameters now what is the task what is the experience you provide to the machine and how do you assess its performance hello yes yes ma'am yes 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 who is that yes ma'am i'll tell you that ma'am sarfraz sarfraz is yes, sarfraz tell me yes ma'am i'm just telling that the task what we what will perform there mm. is that uh, uh, we have to check the previous data means how he has performed task previously. task i'm asking about task not experience do not get confused okay 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 mm. if you are asking about task then uh, ma'am for task uh, i think we can uh, give the task that to uh, check whether the student uh, is eligible for the criteria or not mm -hmm. whether the student will get into iit or not yes ma'am for that we have to check the eligible criteria mm -hmm. now ma'am eligible yes, criteria the, leave about that what is your outcome you are expecting ma'am the outcome is that whether the student will get into that uh, iit or not uh, by that is your task that's performance. all stop there stop there that is your task Okay. okay do not get confused your outcome should be crisp and clear what is the outcome okay. here it is in the question itself did you notice you are developing yes, a machine learning asking. model for what what is the task predicting whether a student will get oh. into iit yes or no that's all okay ma'am okay. got it now tell me what is the experience yes. you provide to it ma'am experience i told before only that uh, correct uh, now you come to that yes ma'am and the all the previous data we... yes ma'am all the previous data previous yes. data of his yes. academic performance uh, of other students academic performance and whether they have got into iit or not yes ma'am yes ma'am right that is the experience yes. you provide to the yes. machine it learns from the previous experience that for this combination of parameters for this this academic uh, uh, indicators this student has got into iit this student didn't yes. succeed, succeed in getting into iit okay all this yes, previous please. data will be its experience correct okay ma'am yes okay ma now what how do you assess the performance ma'am the performance i will assess that uh, first of all i have to check that whether the performance is uh, valid or not means if he'll perform uh, like we have to check some criteria means we have to give some Uh, dummy data uh, mm. to the machine and check if it's performing well or not. If exactly. you are giving, giving some data there, if mm. you are giving some data there, you have to check whether the data is sufficient or not for that. Mm -hmm. okay, no, no, no. Again, you are deviating. Uh, initially, you are right. You give it yes, a you give it dummy data means previous data again where the labels yes, are hidden. Means yes, you yes. give the details of some students. and you also know that they have got into iit or not but you hide those labels yes ma'am yes ma'am okay now you ask the machine to uh, predict whether about those students what is the outcome whether they got into iit or not now yes, check them tally them with the existing labels yes ma'am yes ma'am okay with what accuracy it performs the student has got into iit and it also predicted that the student got into iit it predicted correctly now out of 100 such predictions it has made 90 predictions correctly so we can say that its performance is 90% okay got it okay yes ma'am students any doubt in this so far right assuming that you don't have any doubts and in the next class we'll uh, go little back again uh, how to adjust the weights and go forward from that
uh, point. Right? See you in the next class.